Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> so I'm doing one of the impromptu um, lightning talks tonight. So I decided to call this Ruby on Rails for the absolute beginner. So although I have 12 years of IT experience, several certifications, and I can do a lot with a network, when it came to programming, not so much. Now, I've certainly hacked a couple of PHP scripts, uh, you know, I made some changes, and actually when it comes to the cPanel, WHM, HDX files, and DNS, I'm pretty solid, but I realized none of that was helping me in the programming world. So two years ago, I moved to San Francisco, and I was really excited because I realized there were all these women out here who were coding. I came from the Midwest, and they were pretty rare. I mean, I read about them in books, I saw them in magazines. <laughs> And I, one of the first events I went to was uh, the outreach workshop for women, the Ruby on Rails stuff. And I, in fact, did that again this year. Um, but I kept thinking, like, how do I begin to program? You know, how do I really get this underway? And there were kind of two questions in my mind. One, would I be a horrible programmer or would I be a super awesome one? But I had to give myself the chance to do it. So I want to talk about, like, what holds us back? Right, because I, for two years, have been saying, oh, I'm learning to program, oh, I'm learning. And people, you know, they go, great job on Twitter and on YouTube, they're like, keep going, keep learning. And then I have that guilt feeling, like how much time am I really spending, right? And I bought Chris Pine's book, I've done all these things, or I see some head nods. <laughs> and you look at that book and you're like, wow, why have I finished um, The Hunger Games? But Chris Pine's book is still there. <laughs> um, yes, I'm on book number three for the Hunger Games. <laughs> um, so Chucky talked about um, you know removing things like I think from your vocabulary and rereading emails is a great start so that you can <clears throat> definitely have a stronger voice um, in the written form. But also it's important when you're talking to people, uh, removing I think and I feel. So let's imagine for the next couple of minutes that that inner critic, that inner voice, has been silenced, and let's talk about how to get this done. So there's Ruby and there's Rails. Ruby is a programming language, right? And so what is a programming language? That's when you convert machine language um, to kind of regular, um, what can I say, interpretable um, commands. So you get a computer or program to do what you want. <clears throat> Let's talk about some of the tools that you'll need to interact um, with this machine language. Um, I have a list here, including uh, the Terminal, Ruby, Rails, Text Editor, GitHub, and Heroku. So the Terminal um, is pretty much a command line interface. You can go ahead and type in commands, you can run scripts, batch files, and so on. Um, Ruby was created in 1995, and people consider it to be elegant, uh, simple, those sorts of things. Uh, for me, it's really the first language I'm learning, so I can't compare it to all those others, like Python and things like that. So Rails is a framework. Uh, a framework is basically a set of stored commands, kind of like shortcuts, to help you get stuff done. So that's kind of why it became so popular, because you didn't have to write all these things yourself. And the text editor. That's where you spend a lot of your time writing the code before you upload it, or commit it, or submit it, or share it with others. GitHub, two parts there, Get and Hub. So Get is a way to keep track of the code uh, that you are making, especially when you share with other people. It's important that you know what version you're working on, and Hub, a place where people get together. So that's been a really nice tool in the community for people to share code. And Heroku, which is where you can go ahead and upload and share your Ruby or Rails program with others and show how awesome you are. So when it came down to programming 101, I realized the syntax um, was very, very important. And even if you think you're a good typer now, typing syntax is completely different. So learning to code, probably one of the most important uh, things uh, for you to remember is you have to keep at it. You have to repetitively keep at it, like learning to play the guitar. If you practice once a week, you're not going to get to play any of those awesome songs that you hear you know, when you're in the car and you're jamming. You're never going to sound like that, so you really have to put in the time. Uh, community, I've learned, is also really important. You have to go to meetups, user groups, and if you feel intimidated, bring a friend along. Uh, and also go to hackathons and go to events where they ask you to bring out your skill sets. You're going to have to be uncomfortable, like how I'm standing up here and I told Judy like two days ago, yeah, I'll go up there and talk. 
I don't have any slides. Um, but you know, I think um, that's really important. And also start contributing to open source code. You can start with documentation. That's a great way to start. Contribute to Wikipedia and take it from there. So thank you. I think that was.